Innuendo is only really pleasing when not everyone gets it. It's funny when it's ambiguous, when it's acting as a code, when some listeners are hearing one message and others are able to spot another one being smuggled through. It stops being funny when there's no one left outside the joke. No one who isn't even for a moment entertaining the possibility that these plums you're saying you've bruised are actual damaged pieces of fruit. But in 2010, of course, no one is thinking that. Even the proverbial vicar is wondering why that unfortunate young man isn't more careful with his testicles. Then the only way to make it funny again is to puncture it, to respond to anyone who insists on saying it's not the size that counts, it's what you do with it, with, oh really, like with penises? Because that's basically what they're saying in the first place. As we get more and more open about sex, so innuendo becomes just a stupid pun. Presumably that's why certain 60s sitcoms and carry-on films were so endlessly filled with innuendo, because sex had only recently become something you could allude to, and so the place between saying something innocent and saying something rude was fraught with tension, ambiguity, and so humour. But now that we live in a world where there's a primetime TV programme, a jolly, glamorous show, not a hard-hitting drama, about the crazy hijinks of being a prostitute, and reality TV shows in which people copulate on air, what is the earthly use of innuendo? Conversely, imagine how difficult innuendo must have been in the Victorian era, when any reference to sexual matters was unthinkable. I'm told there's a pub in London which used to be a brothel in the 1890s, and you can tell this because behind the bar are discreet but explicit carvings of Victorian gentlemen having sex with ladies. This, presumably, being what the management had to resort to in order to convey to potential clients the nature of the services being offered. It was no good just saying, This establishment, sir, it's a place where you can meet a lady, sir. Well, so is every place, except my club and any workplace, but that still leaves lots of places. Yes, sir, but when I say meet a lady, I mean you can make love to her. Ah, well, I'm afraid my days of quoting poetry and uttering sweet blandishments are rather behind me. No, sir, I mean you can go to bed with her. But I'm not in the least tired, and I have an excellent bed of my own. Sir, if you give me money, you can put your penis in a lady's vagina. Oh, right, well, no thank you, for you see, I am a screaming bender.